How does someone actually die from dementia? In this video, I'm going to be talking about how dementia actually progresses, what causes death, and then how can you help as the caregiver? When I say dementia, specifically I'm talking about all types of dementia, Alzheimer's disease, even Parkinson's disease. Yes, they are all different and they all will look a little different, but in general, all of those diseases will fit into what I'm about to say in this video. Dementia is a horrific disease. We all know this. It does carry a different progression, especially in the hospice world. So with certain types of cancers, I see a big steep slope progression. They decline usually very quickly. With diseases like dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, they have a staircase decline, meaning they are meeting a new plateau. They're living right here with this new normal. And then suddenly something happens. It's usually a fall or some kind of infection, a UTI or aspiration pneumonia. When this happens, their health will decline and they'll be down here and they'll be at a new normal where they seem like, oh my gosh, is this it? Or, or they may even seem like they're appropriate for hospice at this time, it just depends. And then slowly but surely, whether they're on hospice or not, they usually will creep back up and they won't plateau back out where they were, they'll plateau like around here somewhere, right? So there is some decline and it turns into the slow stairway decline, which can be really difficult because watching someone slowly decline and slowly deteriorate, slowly change over time, it's just really hard to watch and care for someone like that. So the two things I said that can cause that steep decline at first are usually infections. So a UTI, which is a urinary tract infection or aspiration pneumonia which is when you inhale little food particles into your lungs, which can happen a lot with people with, this, with these diseases. Two things that are important to think about during these times would be fall prevention and infection prevention. Best you can keeping this person clean and keeping this person safe by preventing falls. People ask me all the time, what do people with dementia actually die from? There's a couple things. Sometimes it's an event. Like I said, they have aspiration pneumonia and they decline so much, they will actually die from the infection. But the one I see more commonly is the slow gradual progression of dementia where they eventually end up on hospice and they eventually stop eating and drinking, and then they have this natural death. They're dying from the disease of dementia, but the disease of dementia makes them stop eating and drinking, which essentially causes them to go into the actively dying phase. I will say out of all the diseases that I see people dying from, dementia, like I said, is progressive and difficult because it's the whole duration of this person's life, 10, 15 years. But I will say the end of dementia during the actively dying phases is usually very, very peaceful. You will mostly see your loved one sleeping all the time and not eating and drinking sleeping all the time and not eating and drinking. And this does lead to a very peaceful death. So the thing that's surprising to a lot of people is that confusion and agitation and restlessness that happens a lot in the beginning stages of dementia is not really present at the end. Every once in a while, people with dementia will be in the actively dying phase and be restless and agitated. But I would say nine times out of 10, the agitation, the restlessness, the confusion is gone at the very, very end. And the person is usually just sleeping and peaceful. How can you help your loved one with dementia? The biggest thing I always say is keep them clean, safe, and comfortable. Those can be difficult things to do, but if you are doing them and you ask yourself, is my loved one clean? Are they safe? Are they comfortable? You're good. You don't need to do anything else in that moment. What are some things you can look out for? Because skin breakdown is one thing I do see a lot with dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. Why do we see it? It's usually because they eventually become so debilitated they are bed bound. When you're bed bound, you are laying down a lot and there's pressure points on your body that can get pressure wounds. One thing to remember is you can care for your loved one the best possible way you can. You can do all the things I'm telling you to do and they still might get pressure wounds. This does not mean you're taking bad care of them. 
This is just the nature of the beast sometimes. So let me show you some things to look out for so you can kind of catch these things early. The best thing you can do each time you change your loved one, if they're bed bound, would be to check for redness. And I'm gonna show you some pictures now to show you what the redness might look like. It's usually on the buttock or the upper part of the butt, you'll see some redness. The heels are a big place where you might see redness, shoulder blades, it really depends. You just want to check the whole back side of their body usually. Now, if you do start seeing these little pink or red areas, it's okay. It's to be expected, but just keep an eye on that area. And the best thing you can do is turn them when you think of it throughout the day, take them off the pressure point, a little pillow underneath the butt. You wanna float the heels if you can with the pillow so they're not touching the bed. Little things like that will go a long way in helping skin breakdown. If you know someone who is a caregiver and you want ways to be of service to this person, people always ask me, how can I help my aunt who's the caregiver for my uncle or for my neighbor who I know is caring for their mom? How can I help? Ask. <laughs> First off, offer to be there. You know, hey, can I give you a break? I'm happy to sit with your loved one for a couple hours while you go get coffee or go get food or go walk around the neighborhood, something. Offer to be there, offer to give them a break. Show up with coffee, show up with food, just show up for this person. And if you are the main caregiver, you need to accept the help. I think it's so easy for people to go, no, 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 or they're not gonna know how to do it, or it's okay, I can't leave. No, this is the time to accept help. If you are having people ask, how can I help you? Tell them, tell them. You need to take breaks so you can care for yourself too.